Hey guys, you saw it in the title in this video. I'm going to go through the top 10 tourist mistakes to avoid next time you are in Switzerland. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you're new here, please consider liking and subscribing and sticking around for travel content and all things living in Switzerland. So this video is really exciting because I co-created it with you all on Instagram. So if you don't follow us now is your chance to follow us at The Traveling Swiss. I ask a lot of questions and, and you guys help me create this video by going through the top 10 things that you see tourists doing most often in Switzerland that you think are just best to avoid. So I think this video is really timely because it's looking now like travel might finally be possible this summer. So if those of you are planning to come to Europe who maybe haven't been able to come in the last year and a half, Switzerland is a great place to visit, but there's a lot of mistakes that I see tourists making, myself included, in the time that I've lived here that I think would just be better if you avoid with a little bit planning. So without further ado, let's get right into the list. Okay, so the number one tourist mistake to avoid, and a few of you actually said this, and I think it was probably the top rated one when I was surveying Instagram and some friends and family, and that is not having Swiss francs. So you will probably see this come up a few times in this video where Switzerland, you might assume is similar with the rest of Europe, but Switzerland is not in the EU and they do a lot of things very differently than some of their neighboring countries. So first things first, they are not on the Euro. That's not to say that you can't use it, but I would certainly not recommend that you use the Euro because you will not get a good exchange rate and that's just not the currency that they use in Switzerland. So just save yourself some hassle, go to an ATM and take out some Swiss francs, make it really easy. A lot of places do accept cards as well. So if you have like a travel credit card or something that doesn't have international exchange fees, that's a great option as well. But if you have some extra euros and you're coming from Italy or France or something like that, save yourself the hassle and just exchange those when you're there or use them when you're there. Don't try to use them in, in Switzerland. Just, just take out some Swiss francs. So the second one is almost a little bit similar in the sense of you might expect that this is the same everywhere in Europe, but it is not. And that is bringing the wrong travel adapter. I actually spoke about this in a culture shock video that I did about Switzerland. I'll link it here um, if you're interested in watching that. This is a mistake that I made the first time I came to Switzerland and it was really, really frustrating. I brought that same kind of European plug adapter that is used in most of mainland Europe and Iceland, most of Europe except for the United Kingdom. And that is not what they use in Switzerland. It will not fit into the plug adapter. They look kind of similar, but the Swiss one is a little bit smaller. So I'll put pictures on the screen to make sure you get the right adapter. And this is so much easier to do before you get to Switzerland. So you can get them for a couple dollars on Amazon if you're buying them in the US, but just make sure you have the right adapter. If you're coming from like Germany, France, Italy, Austria, any of Switzerland's bordering countries, they will all use the same plug type, but Switzerland's is different. So might be a little bit of a headache if you don't have it and then you have to run into like the tourist shops and pay quite a bit more money. So just something easy to avoid and, and get that right adapter. Okay, so the next few tips are all gonna be about Swiss trains, which if you are in Switzerland for any amount of time, I am sure you will be taking. So let's get right into it. So the third thing to avoid doing in Switzerland as a tourist mistake is getting the wrong train ticket. So this can just be avoided with a little bit of planning, but if you don't know, most of Switzerland is on an honor system, meaning that no one is going to check your ticket before you get on the train and it's up to you to buy the correct fare type, class, all of that, and then get on the train with the right ticket. If you get controlled on the train and you don't have the correct ticket, they don't usually care if you're a tourist or not, you're gonna get a fine. So just make sure that you're kind of auto controlling yourself and you get the correct ticket. So. When you go to a machine, I'll show you what they look like. You're gonna have a few different options that we can go through. One is the first or second class. So second class is totally fine in Switzerland, but when you get that, just make sure when you get on the train, you get in the second class train and you're not sitting in the wrong section. 
And then also just make sure that you're not buying the half fare card ticket unless you have a half fare card. So the half fare is something a lot of people who live in Switzerland buy, which means that you pay 180 francs once a year and all of your tickets are half off. Some people who have come to Switzerland have told me that they saw that and just thought it was like a discount for whatever reason when they're buying it. And then if you get controlled and you can't show that you have that valid half fare card, you will get a ticket. So just make sure you can do a little bit of research online. The SBB has an app, which is really helpful to buy tickets, but just be careful when you're buying the train tickets because it is your responsibility to buy the correct one and sit in the correct station. You're just gonna buy it and get on the train. So you have to just be a little bit more responsible for yourself for, for these types of things. Okay, the fourth thing, and, and a few of you said this and people have said this to me all the time, and that is don't put your feet up on the seats on the trains. This should be obvious, but what I will say, the way the trains are set up in Switzerland is you have two seats facing two other seats, so in like a little block of four, and the distance is kind of perfect to, to naturally want to put your feet on them. It is not only like kind of gross, I don't see any Swiss people doing this, only tourists, but you can get a ticket if you do this. Someone can come over and fine you for putting your feet up on the seat. So just don't put your feet up on the seat. It's something that maybe people do it if you live in a city like New York and they're like sprawled out on the subways or whatever, but here nobody does it. So just don't put your feet up on the seat, even though I understand the inclination to want to do it based on the way the trains are laid out. The fifth one applies to trains, but it also applies to just any kind of public space you are in, whether that be like a grocery store or a park or something like that. And I can say as an American, but specifically as a New Yorker, I get in trouble with this a lot. And that is speaking too loudly. I think this is true in Switzerland and quite a few other places in Europe, but their natural tone of speech and their volume of speech is just quieter. It's softer. And Americans, I think, tend to be really, really loud. I know that if you know, I'm anywhere with a group of Swiss people. I'm usually the loudest one in the room and my husband has to tell me that like I'm screaming or to be quiet. And just to me, that's like my natural tone of voice. I tend to be like easily excitable and just talk loudly. I talk with my hands. It's just, it's just the way I am. But I have certainly gotten dirty looks and trains and people sometimes actually can get like flustered and, sh and shush you. So what I will say is just speak a little bit quieter it, read the room is, is the best example. So I think, you know, if you're on a train and people are almost silent, just, just be quiet. Some cars on the trains are actually like totally silent cars. So just be a little bit quieter than you're used to and be respectful of, of the people around you. It's something that like I day to day, I've lived in Switzerland for almost a year now, still catch myself where I'm, I'm being much louder than everyone around me. So as Americans, I do think we have that stereotype of being really loud and kind of obnoxious. And I think I, I kind of understand why now that I'm in Switzerland and I see how loud I am compared to other people. So just be a little bit quieter or else, you know, you're going to get dirty looks or like a sh no one's going to say anything to you, but it's, it's just easier to, to be a little bit more respectful. Okay, the next tourist mistake to avoid in Switzerland is kind of overarching and sweeping, and that is not planning enough in advance and not budgeting appropriately. So this came up a few times, and Switzerland is very, very expensive, and you need to budget correctly and or plan in advance. So I made a video before about ways to do Switzerland on a budget. I will link it here. But in general, I think, you know, to summarize that video, if you don't want to watch it though, there are some good tips in there is the best way to do Switzerland on a budget is to plan it in advance. You can get discounts on train tickets if you book them in advance and you can get better deals on hotels, all kinds of things. You just need to do a little bit of planning and just do all of this in advance. And I think some people who are backpacking through Europe and going to a few different countries like to do things quite spontaneously. That's a really, really easy way in Switzerland to just waste a ton of money. So for example, me and my husband just booked a ticket for a few weeks from now, about four weekends from now to go from Zurich to Geneva. And we got it um, with the discount for 15 francs. And if we were buying it, you know, same day buying it for today, that would be 45 or 50 francs, you know, with our half fare card. So it's just, it's a really significant kind of difference. It would have been three times the price if we didn't book it in advance. So it's just a way to save 
save money is just plan in advance. So I understand the allure of just going to Europe and figuring out when you're there and going from country to country if you're spending a couple of weeks here. But Switzerland is, it's a tough place to do that unless you have like quite a bit of disposable income. And even if you do, why waste money? So my general tip here is to just plan Switzerland a little bit more carefully than you would be planning some other vacations. It can be really, really expensive. So the seventh tourist mistake to avoid in Switzerland, and again, quite a few of you have said this, and I know that I myself have had this experience a few times, not just in Switzerland, but in, in Germany also when we went as recently as, you know, last October, and that is planning to do your shopping or buying souvenirs or even food shopping on a Sunday. So in Switzerland, Sunday is truly, truly the, the day of rest and you will not see people in cities, in stores, everything will be closed except for maybe like a gas station store or stores in the main trade station and they will be very crowded if they are open. So just avoid the headache and, and plan to do your shopping on a different day. So I think the, the worst thing that I see here, which is really such a bummer, is if you go for a week and you're flying out on a Sunday or something like that and you're just, you wanna save your souvenir shopping and do everything all at the end of your trip and then you go to a store and then you realize absolutely nothing is is open and that could be really frustrating and then you just need to, you know, buy some stuff in like the airport gift shop, which is really a bummer. So just be aware that in Switzerland you will really not find much of anything open on Sunday, except for maybe a supermarket in a train station or like a gas station store, things like that. Things in like the major train stations may be open, but you will not have nearly the same amount of options to do the rest of the week. So all that to say, do a little bit more pre-planning. Don't wait until Sunday if it's the last day of your trip to do your shopping because nothing will be open and, and you'll be pretty disappointed. Okay. So we're getting towards the end, but stay tuned because we have some more good tips. The eighth tourist mistake that I want you to avoid in Switzerland is not being aware of the languages when you're going from region to region. If you are not aware, and if you've watched my channel for a few videos, I've, I've spoken about this you know, at length a few different times. Switzerland has four national languages, none of them are English. I will put it on the screen, the map of it, but depending where you are in Switzerland, they will either be speaking French, Italian, a dialect of German called Swiss German, and this can even vary region to region, the way the Swiss German sounds or Romanche. And I think it's really appreciated if you at least have a few sayings in the local language, like hello, thank you, but I think what may not be super appreciated is if you're using, for example, and I think this happens a lot because people associate Switzerland with a German speaking country because two thirds of it is German speaking, which I totally understand. If you're somewhere like in Geneva or Lausanne and you're trying to use German there, I think that will be, you know, not really appreciated and you're, you're gonna look like either rude and, and inconsiderate or just like you don't know. I think in that situation, if you don't speak French, English is probably a better option in most places than, than, than German will be. But I would just say, you know, my general advice for anywhere you're traveling is try to pick up, you know, at least hello, goodbye, thank you, things like that that are going to help you just show, you know, the locals that you're trying to be, you know, as, as kind as possible and respectful of their culture. But I think the main takeaway here is just be aware of the language of where you are speaking. It's kind of amazing how quickly you can cross between language borders in Switzerland. So, you know, if you go from Geneva and you start driving into the Alps at some point, you're going to switch right into the German speaking region. And it's, it's kind of amazing how quickly it happens. So in Switzerland, it's a little bit unique in that sense of how quickly the language has changed. So just be aware of the region you're in and, and try to adapt to that language if at all possible, or, you know, just, just learn how to ask in the language if people speak English or if people speak whatever language you speak, just have some of those, those phrases. But yeah, to summarize, Switzerland is really unique. You can cross language borders super, super easily. So not a big deal if you make a mistake, but it is really appreciated if you know a little bit of, of the language of, of where you are at any given time and can use some of those terms and phrases. Okay, we are getting towards the end. The ninth tourist mistake I don't want you to make in Switzerland is only visiting the cities 
Switzerland is so well connected. It is so easy to get into the most remote parts of Switzerland without a car. But in general, I think the reason that most people come to Switzerland should be for the amazing nature. It is absolutely beautiful, the Alps, all times of year. Anyone who goes to Switzerland, I really, really recommend that you go somewhere a little bit off the beaten path. Of course, places like Lucerne are, are absolutely famous and beautiful, and they are famous for a reason for tourism because Lucerne really is a beautiful city and lovely place to explore. So is Interlaken, but there's so much more to Switzerland than some of these just, you know, really, really popular touristy destinations. So we have a whole playlist of travel videos you can go through there, or you can do some searching, um, you know, based on where you're flying in and out of, but Geneva and Zurich are great places to, you know, start as a base and then explore some of these more remote parts of Switzerland that are just absolutely stunning. So that's, you know, my biggest tip is not to spend all of your time in like Lucerne and Interlaken and some of these big places. It's to go into the Alps, really explore Switzerland and make sure you see more than just those places that you see on Instagram because Switzerland is absolutely just an amazing place everywhere you go. The last tip is to not pack the correct clothes in Switzerland. This came up a few times and some people mentioned not packing the right shoes. We see people hiking a lot of times in like sneakers on mud, which is really, really challenging. But in general, think about the trip you're planning. And this goes back to my earlier tip as well about having a pre-planned itinerary a little bit more in Switzerland. Switzerland has really dynamic altitude changes depending on where you're visiting, of course, because of the mountains. You can be visiting Switzerland in, in the summer and it can be really, really warm, you know, 25 degrees Celsius or, or upwards of that in the cities in the summer. But if you're gonna go do a hike at a few thousand meters of altitude, it will get pretty chilly. It, there'll still be snow sometimes. So just make sure you're planning appropriately and you bring the correct, you know, bring layers, bring the correct hiking shoes. Switzerland in general has really, really crazy weather patterns. I think it can go from raining to sunny really, really quickly. And again, if you're changing altitudes, it's, it's the weather is going to change really dramatically. So if you're someone like me that grew up in like a big city that's at sea level and you didn't have those experiences, like taking a train and all of a sudden the village you're in now is like, 2000 plus meters of altitude and the weather has changed quite a bit. It's just something that you might not be prepared for. So Switzerland in general is really important to just pack a little bit more diligently, bring a raincoat, bring hiking boots, maybe bring snowshoes, depending on where you're coming and just be prepared for all of those things. Because if you get to Switzerland and you forgot clothes like that, it's going to be so unnecessarily expensive here you know, likely more expensive than any other country in the world. So just pack those things and, and bring them. And it'll save yourself a headache and you'll enjoy the trip so much more. But all right, guys, that is it. I hope you learned something from this video. I really appreciate everyone's support in growing this channel and just watching me talk to you about my experience in Switzerland. I have a good time. I hope you're having a good time too. And I hope you're learning something. So if you were helped by this, please leave me a comment, message me on Instagram. But I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye, guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please make sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you soon.